a CBC color presentation. Scientific reality of life can be explained by the analysis of what this is. The reality of the beauty of the rose is the sap. And how do we find this reality of the rose? by going deeper into the petal and transcending the quality of the petal when we arrive at the, so at the level of the sap, there we find the reality of this rose. Telescope, tonight brought to you by your telephone company, part of the Trans-Canada Telephone System, a world of communications progress at your fingertips. Maharishi Mahashyogi, whose face has become almost as familiar as some of his celebrated followers, is a simple man with a simple message. He is a guru a teacher of a technique of meditation based on traditions originated thousands of years ago. Much has been written and said about the involvement of people like the Beatles and Mia Farrow with this Eastern philosophy, but the fact remains that followers of Maharishi in the Western world are numbered in the hundreds of thousands, nearly 20,000 of them in Canada. This past summer, hundreds of these Canadians, doctors, lawyers, housewives, university students, journeyed to Alberta's Chateau Lake Louise to join Maharishi in a six-day seminar. Telescope was granted the exclusive right to film some of their activities and to meet privately with the founder of the International Meditation Society. It was not Maharishi's only visit to Canada. He's traveled the world ten times over since he first left his native India in 1959, after 13 years of monastic seclusion. His teachings are totally opposed to the so-called mind-expanding drugs and should not be interpreted as a religion, quite the contrary. One becomes more religious in his own religion through the technique of transcendental meditation. This is a technique. The National Meditation Society does not offer a religion. It offers a technique for all good in life. That technique is imparted by what the society calls instructors or initiators. The prospective meditator is given a mantra, one of a number of key words or sounds, to aid in achieving a transcendental state. And further development in the method remains a private matter. In just a few moments, director Colin Smith and Telescope's color cameras will collaborate to bring you a portrait of a 20th century guru, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Last summer, in a Canadian setting not unlike the remoteness of his headquarters in Rishikesh, at the foot of the Himalayas overlooking the Ganges River, India's Maharishi Mahashyogi attended a week-long seminar at the Chateau Lake Louise near Banff. Hundreds of Canadians journeyed there to welcome him. My joy to see you all assembled here. I quite appreciate your foregoing your comforts of home and assembling here in this forest. <laughs> <laughs> With a desire to learn more about transcendental meditation because suffering is dominating life everywhere. Tension and stress and strain are increasing in every country. Whether it's a flu affluent society or a developing nation, but suffering is everywhere. It is possible for every man to go deep within and saturate his conscious mind with inner happiness, with that unlimited energy and intelligence that dwells at the source of thought. The principle of transcendental meditation 
is simple. Being is bliss in its nature, is infinite happiness. Mind is always moving in the direction of greater happiness. It is the experience of everyone, wherever the mind goes, it goes in the direction of greater happiness. And because the nature of inner being is bliss, infinite happiness, therefore the mind during transcendental meditation takes that inward course in a most spontaneous manner. In this meditation, we do not concentrate or control the mind. We let the mind follow its natural instinct towards greater happiness it, and it goes within and gains bliss consciousness in the being. Yes. The technique is, we take a specific thought which suits us, which is called the mantra or a suitable sound for us which we receive from the trained teacher of transcendental meditation. And these teachers are found everywhere in the world. I have trained them properly and they give a suitable word and the man experiences the thought of that sound and starts minimizing that thought to experience the finer state of that thought uh, until the source of thought is fathomed and the conscious mind reaches the transcendental area of being. So from gross thought to the subtle state of thought to the subtler to the subtlest state of thought, this is the path of transcendental meditation till the mind, conscious mind reaches the bliss consciousness or transcendental consciousness or pure consciousness or the state of being. Here in this state of being, the mind becomes soaked with energy, intelligence and great happiness. With it, it comes out and performs an experience in the world much better than before. of the lake and the ripples and the beautiful reflection of the glacier reminds me of the story of inner life. The mind is deep like a lake. The ripples on the surface represent the conscious mind, the activity of the mind on the surface. And the whole depth of the lake is silent. And that is the subconscious mind which is not used by the waves. But if the waves could deepen and incorporate more silent levels of the water, the waves could become the waves of the ocean, the mighty waves. This is what happens in transcendental meditation. The surface activity of the conscious mind deepens and incorporates within its fold the depth of the subconscious. And with practice, nothing remains subconscious. Hmm? The whole subconscious becomes conscious and a man starts using full potential of the mind. And the reflection of the glacier on the water is like the impression of the objects that the mind perceives. And as long as the mind is not capable of maintaining its essential nature, which is bliss consciousness, so long the mind gets imprinted by the perceptions of the objects. And this is called the bondage of the mind. The mind loses bliss consciousness and gains the joy of the reflections of the world, the joy of the relative order, losing the bliss of the absolute eternal being. When the mind is not capable of maintaining its essential nature, the bliss consciousness, and is overshadowed by the reflections of the object of perception, then only the object remains and the subject as if becomes annihilated. This annihilation of the subjective nature within is a great loss 
it's a loss of eternal bliss at the cost of temporary joys. Such a life where the value of the matter dominates is called material life and the spirit gets annihilated. But when through the practice of transcendental meditation, the mind goes deep within to the source of thought, transcends the thought and gains bliss consciousness and is capable of maintaining that even when it comes out into the world, the experience of objective nature, then it is called spiritual life, that the spirit is not capable of being overshadowed anymore by the objective experience. And this is spiritual life. This is life in eternal liberation. And without this, life is in bondage. A great loss. As if loss of a billion pounds and gain of a million. Loss of eternal bliss consciousness and gain of a worldly fleeting joy. The vision, the vision of the lake brings about a great teaching of spiritual life. Life is bliss. It's pure existence. Just like the flower is, the sap. different layers of manifestation of pure existence, pure being, absolute consciousness, pure intelligence. This is what life is. And as it expresses itself, it expresses in layers of existence, layers of energy, layers of intelligence, layers of bliss, happiness. This is life. All this beautiful nature, <laughs> people in their sad and miserable moods, in their stressed and strained life, even if they come out to this beautiful nature, they can't enjoy. What is needed is the bliss out of transcendental meditation, the joy, the happy mood. If all the population of the people could practice transcendental meditation, they'll enjoy all this nature to the maximum. Hmm? We are going to create a society free from suffering and stress and strain. And then, really, the gift of God on earth, such pretty nature, will be enjoyed by everyone. After a brief intermission, Telescope resumes its visit with India's Maharishi Mahashyogi, founder of the International Meditation Society, filmed during his recent visit to Canada's Chateau Lake Louise. History of transcendental meditation starts from creation. Ever since man was born, he was born with inner being, which is absolute eternal. He was born with the faculty of thinking and action. Man was born with three fields of life. Field of action based on think, field of thinking. Field of thinking based on field of being, inner being. And all the ancient records of human development bring out transcendental meditation to establish a coordination between the outer fields of life and the inner field of being, which is inexhaustible energy, intelligence and happiness. The records of this we find in the most ancient record of human research contained in the Vedas, in the Upanishads, in Bhagavad Gita. Five thousand years ago, Lord Krishna taught to Arjuna the coordination of the inner being with the outer world. Three thousand years ago, Lord Buddha taught the same message of transcendental meditation to his disciples when he said, 
gain nirvana, eternal freedom through meditation. Two thousand years ago, Christ taught the same message of transcendental meditation when he said, kingdom of heaven is within you. Thereby he meant that you are carrying a pool of bliss within and therefore take your mind to that inner pool of happiness and come out blissful and happy. Enjoy the world and no one need suffer. This was the message of Christ two thousand years ago. Same message today. By the grace of Gurudev, my master, at whose feet I spent about thirteen years in the Himalayas, he taught the same message of transcendental meditation to the world because stress and strain is increasing in the world. That only indicates the man has lost sight of the inner value of being, which is infinite happiness, energy and intelligence. This is the history of transcendental meditation to be brought out to man of every generation. It has been in the history of the past, it is to go on in the history of future as long as man's aspirations will keep on rising for greater achievements, transcendental meditation will be uh, a means of gaining success in the world. The history of transcendental meditation is the history of all great teachers in the world. Meditation is not escape. Meditation is taking our attention deep within ourselves in order that we fathom the reservoir of energy and intelligence and happiness within us and come out to enjoy the life more in the world. Meditation is neither hypnosis. Hypnosis takes the awareness to some unrealities of life. If one is feeling uh, warm and he feels I am feeling cold, cold. Mm. One is not able to sleep and one feels that I am sleeping, sleeping. So hypnosis takes a man to the unreality of life. Whereas transcendental meditation makes a man experience the deeper realities of life and makes him to live fulfillment in life. People on drugs, if they say that they also transcend, then we would say that they are transcending the reality of life. They are transcending strength and sensibility and uh, integrity of life. They don't transcend the uh, relative field and get to bliss consciousness as is the transcending during transcendental meditation. In meditation, the mental activity becomes less. Mind experiences finer state of thought. Mental activity becomes less and less. Along with that, simultaneously, the physical activity becomes less. See, we experience in meditation, the breathing becomes less automatically. When the breathing becomes less, the entire functioning of the inner mechanism becomes less. And this provides much more complete rest to the system than is gained even in deep sleep. So people when they meditate morning and evening, they give complete rest to the system. This gives immediately a feeling of well-being, increased energy and efficiency. See, it's like expenditure becoming less at the time when income is increasing. <laughs> you, you gain on both sides. Immediately one feels a feeling of well-being. And this is the main cause of eradicating all psychosomatic diseases. When the system gets complete rest, then with practice it becomes so strong that it does not accumulate stress and strain anymore. Any man who doesn't gather stress and strain, he accomplishes more in life. It's simple. It is very amazing that even though all of us we have been thinking right from the beginning of our life, but rarely we have thought where was the thought 
before we thought it. The origin of thought, nobody bothers about the origin of thought. How the thought starts and how it develops to come to be appreciated as a thought on the conscious thinking level. A thought starts from the depth of consciousness as an air bubble from the bottom of a lake. As the air bubble starts, it's very fine and as it comes up, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. Coming up on the surface, it explodes and there it is appreciated as a bubble. Like that, a thought starts from the deepest level of consciousness. Modern psychology calls it subconscious and as it comes up, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. Coming up on the conscious thinking level, it is appreciated as a thought. In transcendental meditation, we experience the thought on the ordinary thinking level, on the surface level of the mind, huh? on the conscious thinking level, and appreciate its finer states till the conscious mind reaches the source of thought, and thereby the conscious mind expands by the time the conscious mind has experienced the source of thought, full depth of the subconscious has been explored. Nothing remains subconscious. The whole subconscious is incorporated in the conscious and this is called the expansion of the conscious mind. This is the way to use one's full mental potential. Modern psychology says man has been using only a small portion of the mind. Transcendental meditation is a way to enable every man, to educate every man, to make use of his full mental potential. Imagine the development in all fields of civilization, when every man will be using his full mental potential. The man will not gather stress and strain in his aspirations to accomplish more and more, and advancements will be glorious on all fields. That is a society we want to create through the International Meditation Society. Life is bliss and its purpose is expansion of existence, expansion of intelligence, expansion of happiness, so that the individual life expands and expands to universal existence, to cosmic intelligence, to that unbounded bliss. It's a joy this morning to complete this course and I hope to hear from you by the next year that all in your vicinity are enjoying bliss consciousness. No one is suffering, yes? And wish good luck to all of you. World peace can be achieved only by the peace of the individual. So transcendental meditation, eradicating the very weakness of man is a solution to all his problems. And a society of such integrated persons will create a world of peace. Oh, come on. But you should have a flower. was brought to you by your telephone company, part of the Trans-Canada Telephone System, a world of communications progress at your fingertips.